Why isn't there an Islamic feminist movement? Why don't we see Muslim women march in the streets and ask for equal rights? The reason is such an act by a Muslim woman will be considered an act of apostasy. A Muslim woman who rejects Sharia law, which condemns her to the level of apostate, if she doesn't like, for instance, the law that states that she will inherit, have the inheritance of a man. There is a law, for instance, that say that a woman's testimony in court is half the value of a man. A Muslim woman who stands against such laws will be considered immediately an apostate. And there are a few Muslim women who were killed, actually, uh, or threatened with death because they wanted equal rights under the law. What does that leave Muslim women with? Either a death penalty and degradation and humiliation in society? Or what are the other avenues open for women? We cannot find a feminist movement in the Muslim world. It's very little. And it's usually the Muslim feminists today never touch the topic of Sharia or the law. They always say that, oh, Islam has misinterpreted the position about women and we have to reinterpret it, but, uh, but Islam really respects women. So they play around, uh, around the topic and they never really say what is needed to be said. And that's why for a Muslim woman to get respect, to have a good position in society, for a Muslim woman to be powerful in Muslim society. She has to be as radical, if not more radical, than the men. So we see, for instance, a Muslim mother who stands in front of the camera and says, I will give my children to jihad. My son has died for jihad, and I want to give the rest of my children for jihad. What does that mean? It means I support jihad, I support sharia. And what happens to this woman? She's elevated in Muslim society like a saint. She is given a good pension. She, some of them are given positions in the parliament. And women who defend sharia are the ones who are respected. And that's why you find a lot of Muslim women, even educated ones, who defend sharia, who defend polygamy, who def defend the laws that oppress them, and stand and say, we like it, and we, we, uh, we approve of Sharia, and we're good Muslims, and we're wearing, uh, we're wearing our head cover with pride. Some of them come here to, to teach on college campuses, and they, they, uh, they teach that we are happy as Muslim women, as and these are the ones that are picked to teach on college campuses right here in America, in uh, Islamic Studies Department, in Middle East Studies Department, and they are sent by Saudi Arabia. This is their thank you uh, gift, a position to teach on college campuses here in America and advocate that they're happy Muslim women. How will the developments in the Middle East affect the West the world today is a small world. The Muslim world is, is no longer living in its own cocoon and the West in its own cocoon. We are one small world now where everybody affects everybody else. There are many Muslims who live in the West. They are, many of them are demanding Sharia law as a, as a religious right. Um, in England, they've achieved some aspects of Sharia law. In America, uh, they are trying to uh, prevent any laws that prevents Sharia or foreign laws from being practiced in America. Uh, and, uh, and the West needs to understand 
from, learn from history. How can the West learn from history? Look at the history of Islam in India, for instance. When Muslim, Muslims were a minority in India, but a strong minority. And they eventually demanded Sharia law. They wanted a separatist movement. They don't, don't want to live under Indian rule. They want to live under Islamic rule. And what happened, India split itself. They gave them a part of the country called Pakistan today and India. What happened? India split itself apart. Did it cause them to live in peace with Pakistan? Is India and Pakistan living in peace today? No, they are the number one enemy of India is Pakistan and vice versa. Why? Because Pakistan doesn't end there. Now Kashmir wants to be an Islamic state. They want Kashmir to join the Islamic part of India. And terrorism still happens in India from that comes all the way from Pakistan. It's never ending. It can happen in the West. What happens in Chechnya, in Russia, it's the same thing. An area of Russia that's populated by majority Muslim, and they want Sharia law, they want a separatist movement, they, want, uh, they don't want to be ruled by infidel, an infidel state, which is the Russian government. And they are just blowing things up because they want to have a separatist movement from, the Soviet, from Russia. Same thing with Kosovo. Same thing in the Philippines. There is a minority of Muslims in the Philippines who want to secede from the rest of the nation. I predict there will be a Chechnya in France in a couple of decades. There's already a no-go zone in France for the police. Same thing in England. We can have a Chechnya here in America in 30, 40, 50 years. We can leave a disaster for our children, a civil war that is non-winnable, that they have to live. And America can be torn apart between those who want Sharia and those who don't want Sharia. What America is doing today is it's not, it's not admitting there is a problem. And as a matter of fact, in our media, among our politicians, people, people who are standing up against Sharia, which condemn women to stoning for sexual violations, we cannot even dare speak about Sharia. Because under Sharia, anyone who leaves Islam must be killed immediately. That's what the law says immediately. And I'm being called an, an Islamophobe. Why? Because I'm afraid of a law that condemns me to death. The word phobia means, uh, means unreasonable fear. I believe that my fear of Sharia is very reasonable. Who would not fear a law that condemns people to death for sexual violations? for leaving a religion, for insulting uh, the, the religion, for criticizing the religion. This is a tyranny. This is a dark ages that we must understand. And every American should understand that we should be standing united. And unfortunately, America is divided. It's divided uh, even about Sharia, which, which it's the, the liberals in America should be the number one people who should stand against Sharia because it condemns gay people to death. But unfortunately, even the gay community are still leftists and still support uh, Sharia and they're still calling me uh, Islamophobe. The West has a problem and they are feeding the monster. The West is giving a lifeline
to a tyrannical system and a tyrannical legal system. And unfortunately, that's not even helping Muslims. Those who are calling me Islamophobe are not helping Islam. They are not helping Muslims. They are not helping America. They are not helping themselves. America should wake up.